Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a preview of the 7th Armor Division, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Normandy 44 DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so a big thanks to them. Also please remember that this was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look but we're going to be jumping straight on in. And this division was actually one of the strongest divisions that was ever added to Normandy 44. In this game, we'll have to see how it shapes up. Let's start in the recon tab here. We're going to go through all of the units and I'll put together a quick deck. So we start with the Recce Squad, 4, 8 and 12 availability. Their transports are the 2-inch carrier, the MMG carrier, universal carrier and the Jeep. Two-man Sten Squad. And they come with the Battle Weary train. So this gives us a bit of a chance to talk about what is unique about this division, and that is the Battle Weary trait. This is only available in the 7th Armored Desert Rats. And what it's supposed to do is represent their battle wariness from coming over from fighting in Africa. So I've just finished fighting in Africa, they're shipped over to Normandy, and they're going straight back into battle. And this is making them battle wary. What it does is it gives them free veterancy so every unit that has battle weary trait will get plus one veterancy by default and they also take 25 percent more suppression so not quite as bad as disheartened but 25 percent more suppression is taken with these squads let's move on to the scouts the scouts in this unit are actually kind of interesting it's a four-man squad with both a Leanfield Sniper and a Vickers K machine gun. So for a four-man squad, this is actually pretty good. Five available in A, 10 available in B, and 15 available in C. Like even with the Leanfield nerf, yeah, this really isn't too bad as a squad. Uh, and free veterancy as well, which means you're gonna be able to bring them at two vet. I like these quite a lot. Kind of different to some of the other scout squads we normally bump into. Then we have the Daimler AC available, only in B and C though, Six, uh, sorry, 12 and 18 availability. Daimler, it's always a bit of an underwhelming armoured car because it doesn't have HE, but otherwise 75 mils of penetration, base and machine gun, it's okay. Moving on we have the Scouts with Piat, same as the normal Scouts with Piat, so two Stens, two Leonfield Piat. 3 available in A, 6 available in B, 9 available in C. Their transports, I don't think I went over the other scouts' transports, but they are the same. So, Universal Carrier, White Truck, Stuart Recce. It would be really cool if the scouts of Piat had the same weapon lineup with a Piat. <laughs> that would be so, so awesome. Like two Thompsons, Leon, Phil, Vickers, K, and then a Piat. <laughs> that would have been awesome, but uh, maybe a little bit strong. Daimler Little John available in B and C. Uh, these are okay for ambushing heavier tanks with 130 mils of penetration, but they do have to penetrate three times in order to get the kill, and sometimes that can be a bit much of an ask, uh, but maybe just good for kind of finishing off stuff that's already damaged. Regardless, six available in B, yeah, nine available in C. Then we have the stand count, available in A, B, and C. Only one card. Comes with that 37 mil gun, two 30 cows, nice and fast. Technically, just a straight upgrade to the Daimler AC, in my opinion. Then we have the Stuart 6. Stuart 6 is a triple 30 cal tank with a 37 mil main gun. Five available in A, 10 available in B, and 15 available in C. You'll notice that this also gets the battle weary trait, but I don't think it really affects the veterans in the same way it does infantry. Then we have the 75mm auto car available in B and C. This is always a relatively nice unit because the 75mm HE at 12 round per minute rate of fire plus a 50 cal is really good for pinning down enemy infantry while still having good rate of fire and penetration on its main gun. For 35 points, these auto cars are actually really nice. 
finally, we have the Cromwell 4s. And these do not have Battle Weary, even though they're Desert Rat Boys. 5, 10, 15 availability. Four cars. A lot of these could be to do with the contingent of tanks that was like added freshly to the Seventh Armoured to bolster them before they went into Normandy. Uh, so there is that to bear in mind when it comes to looking at the Battle Weary trait. But yeah, a lot of recon Cromwells, just like the Guards Armoured. Let's move on to the infantry tab. So pretty much everything in here is Battle Weary, as you can see. I just scroll through them. They're all battle weary. The first one is a defense group, which come in at two vet. And yeah, standard three, the Enfield, two Bren. Because they have two veterancy, might make them more appealing. And the Bren has now been buffed in this patch to get 15% accuracy. It's not a huge buff, but it does mean that it scales better with veterancy as well. Field engineers are also available 9 18 27 availability their free vet is actually going to make them kind of interesting to work with because i'm not sure if it will save them if they were two vet from a he killing them in one shot i'm curious if that's the case because if it is the case then that could be really good never had a chance to really try that it's not something i've ever <laughs> ever done but yeah, in this deck, maybe we could try. Engineer leader, two venerancy once again. So three Stens, two Lamfields, TNT. Motorized rifles, three Thompsons, four Lamfields, and a Bren with a Pierre. Now the motorized rifles set up here is actually not bad. They also do have access to some 50 cal half tracks. So. Yeah, considering the Federacy, this could be a pretty scary combination. Like a two vet motorized rifle with a 50 cal half track. The 50 cal half track doesn't get the battle weary trait, so that's not going to suffer from the extra suppression. Yeah, could be a good combination. Then there's the rifles three Sten, six Lanfields, Bren. I think this is one more Sten than is normal for, for a rifle. But 9, 18. 27 availability of those. Then we have the motorized rifle leader. It's a pretty good leader. Three Thompsons, Bren, smoke grenade. Kind of like this setup. Two vet means the radius of these leaders are also going to be a bit better. This one has radio, whereas the engineer leader does not. So three, six, nine availability of those. There's also the rifle leader with the Piat, uh, which also gets that for your vet, of course. Same, same as them all. <laughs> Seems we have to repeat myself, but yeah, three and six availability at two vet. And then we have the rifles of Piat, nine, 18, 27 availability, eight Liam fills, two brands Piat. Then there's the Desert Rat special unit, which is a triple Bren squad, two Thompsons, three Liam fields, three Brens, eight, 16, 24 availability can be brought in with those half tracks. Finally, assault engineers. These assault engineers are chunky boys. 35 points, nine Leonfields, two Brens, flamethrower Pia. Great all rounder squads. And with the free veterancy, it's gonna be very scary actually to deal with. Moving on to the tank tab. So tank tab, a couple of cards of Stuart sixes to begin with. 8 available in A, 16 available in B. You can see that these are not battle weary. 37 mil gun to 30 cows. We've got the Abbot of Chantry. The classic ace. This is a Cromwell that was used as a training tank, I believe, that ended up on the front line. And it's super fast because it basically has no armor. <laughs> it's an interesting unit for sure for 35 points. 75 mil gun, two bases, same loadout as a normal Cromwell. Speaking of normal Cromwells, we got plenty of those. Five cards with 8, 16, 24 availability. Cromwells can be very obnoxious 
in large numbers because they're super fast. They can break through incredibly quickly. There's also leader Cromwells, same loadout. Two, four, six availability for the leaders. And then we have the Cromwell 7 available, but only in phase Z. Two cards of these, 12 on a card. These are really nice because they have 120mm of frontal armor. Bringing these in with more veterancy late game could be pretty nice, although the vet curve there is absolutely terrible. But Firefly 5C, your classic 17 pounder on the Sherman 5 hull. 100mm frontal armor. It's going to be what you use to take out enemy heavy armor. Alright, moving on to support. We have the 2 inch mortar. 6, 12, 18 available. 540 meter range makes these a little bit lackluster. But then we have the wasps. <laughs> Good old wasp. Little flame tank for 15 points. 4, 8, 12 availability. Vickers HMG, 6, 12 availability in A and B. Do come in at one vet, but not battle wary. Then we've got the Bedford Supply, three cards of Bedford Supply, 2, 4, 6 availability. And then three cards of Cromwell 6s. So 3, 6, and 9 availability. That is a lot of support Cromwells available in this division. Finally, commanders are infantry, dingo, and <laughs> you guessed it, Cromwell 5. So nice thing about this Cromwell 6, which I didn't really point out, is a 2000 meter range with a decent HE damage. So that's what you get them for. Moving on to the anti-tank tab. Piat, going to be the starter, the two-man Piat squad. 6, 12, 18 availability on those. Then we have the 6-pounder. British 6-pounders do get APCR, but it's only 1,000 meter range. 175 mils of pen, though. Helps you get through the heaviest of armor. Well, maybe not the heaviest if you think about the front armor of a king, tiger, and elephant, but decent armor. <laughs> 4, 8, and 12 availability. A couple cards of Wolverines. 4 and 8 availability. British Wolverines do not get APCR, which is kind of sad. Would make them a lot better. But, uh, yeah, that's there if you want them. 17 pounders, 4 cards available, 2, 4, and 6 availability. 170 millimeter penetration, 8 round per minute rate of fire. And 2 cards of Achilles, which are probably going to be joining you sort of maybe earlier on. Or it really depends on availability, but kind of an option alongside the Firefly because these guys get more rate of fire. All right, moving on to the anti air, we have the Staghound, only available in A, but this is a dual 50 cal, 30 cal vehicle. Uh, good for suppressing enemy infantry, that's for sure. And also uh, does have a decent amount of suppression against aircraft, actually. Then we got the Crusader AAs. There's actually three cards available of these. Three, six, and nine availability with the dual 20 mils. There's three cards available of the Bofors 40 mil on the truck. Yep. Two, four, six availability coming at one vet. And then the Crusader AA Mark II B, which is a tripolston mounted on a Crusader hull. 2 and 4 availability of those. These can do some serious damage. Sort of similar in power to SDK as the 7 ones, but don't have the range, like flag flings, I mean, uh, but don't quite have the range. Well, I think the range actually might be quite similar. Regardless, they're pretty powerful. Artillery, spotters, 3 in A, 6 in B. Unfortunately, no real nice transports for them. Artillery, leader, is available in A, B, and C if you ever need to supplement leaders or you want to reduce the dispersion of your artillery. Only tube artillery, mind you, not MLRS or mortars. Uh, then there's mortars available. 
uh, but they don't have radio, unfortunately. But 4, 8, and 12 available throughout the phases. 107 mil mortars. 4, 8, and 12 availability. 25 pounders. 3, 6, and 12 availability. Two cards of those. And then there's four cards of sextons. 2, 4, and 6 availability. 25 pounder mounted in the armored hull. Then we have two cards of American M12 GMCs, which is interesting. One available in A, two available in B, and then there's a card of Cromwell's with 140mm off map. So one, two, and three availability throughout the phases, and you get a standard Cromwell 4 with it, basically. Finally, air tab, Spitfire, Mark 11. This is just your standard recon Spitfire. Two available in A, four available in B, 605 kilometers per hour. The Mitchell Bombers, the Mitchell Twos. You get one available in A, two available in B, four available in C. Comes with 12 113 kilogram bombs, which is an okay payload, but I don't really like it matched with the availability. What's a better avail availability is the one with the eight 130 kilogram bombs. You get two in A and four in B. Then we have some Belgian Spitfires. Two 20 mils and four 30 cals. 610 km per hour. Excellent agility. Very nice. And we have the contingent of Tempests from New Zealand, which is very cool. Uh, so four available in A. Six available in B and eight available in C. Very nice aircraft. Actually very good at strafing due to the four Hispanos. And they can also come with different payloads. So we have the two 113 kilogram bomb variant, which has three in A, four in B and six in C. The RP3 HE rocket variant, which comes two in A, four in B and six in C. And finally, the 227 kilogram bomb variant, uh, two of those bombs, one in A, two in B, four in C for availability. And that's your lot for the Desert Rats. So let's go ahead and throw together a quick deck. So in the recon tab, I'm definitely going to be bringing in these scouts. I think they're going to be quite useful. We'll bring them in the white truck in phase A and B. On top of that, I do want to bring in a card of the auto cars. I think they're going to be useful in B. Uh, the Stuart could be useful early on but I think I'm just going to go for like Cromwell's, something like this. Maybe even put these in C, just so we have recon with our tanks. In the infantry tab, we don't actually have many slots, so you do need to be smarter here. I don't think the Desert Rats are that good, but I'm going to be bringing them in with half tracks in phase C, I think. I know it's kind of difficult to say. You don't really want too many of these. I don't think they're going to be that useful. We'll bring them in phase A. It's just so expensive though. <laughs> like 435 points. They're not worth it. So maybe not even with a half track. And then bring them in phase B. I don't know. If the triple brand's really going to be enough to justify it. Regardless, I am going to double vet the assault engineers in phase B and C. We'll go for potentially field engineers as well. Like being able to double vet these, I kind of want to try it. We could do double vet in A alongside some rifles, I think. Even some motorized rifles in 50 cal half tracks. And I'm thinking a card of Rifles of Pia in Phase C. I'm just making sure that I'm switching all of these to CMP trucks. Because they are faster. Or in this case, the Jeeps. Yeah, it's actually really important that you do that. So no leaders. 
Honestly, you might not even need a commander in this deck because of the sheer amount of veterancy you have on your leaders. Interesting thought. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is maybe make up for the lack of leaders with like Cromwells. Like I could certainly do like two sets of Cromwell leaders. I'm definitely going to bring in at least one card of Cromwell Sixes. It's a shame that their availability gets cut down so much by Venerancy. Like it might even be better to just do something like this. That's going to be an overwhelming amount of armor in the late game. Like 40 km per hour, 120 mil frontal armor. It's pretty beasty. <laughs> phase A Cromwells, Phase B Cromwells. How are we doing for fireflies though? Uh, probably want to bring in some fireflies in Phase A and Phase B. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to like anti-tank Phase C Achilles. Yeah, <laughs> this is otherwise quite ridiculous. <laughs> okay, moving into the support tab. I'm going to chuck the dingo in there. I always like the dingo. It's fun. And then Cromwells. Cromwells, Cromwells, Cromwells. That's what it's all about. I think phase A Cromwells. Maybe phase B Cromwells. Something like that. I need to think about supply as well. But in the anti-tank tab we've kind of got most of this sorted already. I think early on, 17 pounders. I don't think I'm ever really going to buy two 17 pounders in phase A. You're basically just going to buy 17 pounders when you need something to ambush a heavy tank. Otherwise, you're probably not going to bring them. So I think this is fine. And then in the anti air, I'm going to bring in the Crusader AA Mark II Bs in the early game. Might bring in like both his late game and then Crusader AA's mid game. Artillery. Gonna be difficult to sort out artillery actually. I'm thinking two sextons in the early game. And then maybe we opt for 155 American guns. They only have three ramp per minute rate of fire though. I think it'd be better to do something like this, where we use the Crusader tractors, which we get access to in this division. I don't think I pointed them out, but you get 15,000 supply on these, and they're armoured, which is pretty nice. And air tab. It's got to be some of these Tempests, right? These rockets are nice, these bombs are nice. I think these bombs are probably good to go. Kind of want to bring in more of these Tempests. So this is going to be quite difficult to work out because the infantry tab is costing you a lot in this division. It's a shame the vet takes that away, but I think we go three Tempests or one vet in phase A with some bombers. And then maybe just like phase B Tempests with rockets. There's a kind of multi-roll. Like the HE ones, they can do significant damage to armor. Do I think the artillery is okay? Mm, should be fine. Don't have any supply in the support tab. Hmm. Maybe we can't afford to upvet the Achilles, but if I don't, they're not going to be very good. Is there a way to cut down in the infantry tab? Not really. Is there a way to cut down in the recon tab? I could take out the extra Cromwells, maybe. And we put a card of Bedford Supplies in Phase B. That'll do. I think it's okay. Um, like maybe I don't need the, the commander even. 
because the veterancy is so high already. And then I can add that back in at two vet. Yeah, maybe that's the play. Maybe that's the play. Cool, looks good. Uh, we will leave that as is. Seventh UK armored desert rats. Now, overall, I think this division it's going to be okay. I think it's just going to like lack in availability for the infantry, like almost too much. And I don't think the desert rats are that good of a unit for thirty points. I feel like they should be like twenty-five points for what they are. So they feel a little bit overpriced. Um, in general, with the battle weary trait, I kind of like the way it's used on infantry, but I I do feel they could have gone a bit further with it and maybe use it on some of the tanks. Like it might have been nice if, for example, you had like a card of Cromwell fives that also used battle weary, and then a card that didn't, and therefore you could like choose between having a unit that's like maybe like two vet with battle weary trait. Compared to like a no vet but can't be up vetted card. I think that would have been a, a much nicer way to do the desert rats. Um, so maybe they'll, they'll, they'll change it in the future and maybe switch things up. But for now, I think the battle weary trait is kind of just a gimmick more than anything important to really worry about in this deck. The main thing is going to be like overall availability of infantry and how you, you play around that. Like in a, in a Maverick game, it might not matter. Like in a 1v1, I mean. But in a team game, this might get stretched a little thin. I'll have to wait and see until I try it out in a team game. But that is it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look at the Desert Rats. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the division down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.